Hey, what's up guys? I'm out here locally near where I live. I'm out in West Tennessee today and I've found this little place that I want to show you and it's just like off this random back road and it's this little pond but it's covered in lily pads. I mean today is like the perfect day to go out and shoot this. Not only are the skies perfectly overcast but it just rained and when rain falls, usually any plant life becomes a little bit more lush, a little bit more vibrant. And with the lily pads specifically, they're gonna be a little bit more green. Now, it's a little bit windy today, so I do wanna apologize if like you hear any wind in the microphone. My mics actually ran out of battery and I wasn't aware that they were so low, so I'm sorry about that. But today we're going to go out we're really going to focus on small detail intimate scenes in landscape photography you know how do you pair those up and we're going to be using these lily pads in this pond that's back through this trail right here i'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that perfect skies overhead it's almost like a diffuser of light a natural diffuser over the entire landscape when these clouds roll in and I'm excited because it's been sunny and hot and humid for about a month now. We finally had some rain. I'm ready to get some shooting done. Now, in a situation like this, where you walk up onto a pond covered in lily pads, you may be asking yourself, like, how do you, exactly do you frame this up? Because it can be really tempting to walk up to a place like this, put on a telephoto lens or whatever you're going to shoot to photograph small, intimate details, and be completely overwhelmed by the unorganized chaos that's going on in front of you. I, I want to kind of steer you away from that though, because while it is chaos and while it can feel like that, it doesn't have to be like that. So what I'm using today is this telephoto lens because what we have to do is stand on the bank here and photograph into the water. And what ultimately happens with that is we're gonna be shooting at about 45 degrees angled down, maybe even a little bit less than that. So. What I wanted to do was use a circular polarizer along with it. However, because I don't have a mount for this lens, it doesn't mean I have to go out and spend the amount of money on a mount for this really expensive filter. All I have to do is hold my camera up like this and just know, okay, right here, with this angled at about this degree, holding the holder mount on this filter, I know that it's gonna be circular, polarized correctly to reduce glare off of the surface of the water. So I'm gonna continue doing that. Every time I hold this up and I'm ready to take a photo, I'm gonna hold it at that angle because I know that's what I'm gonna happen to get that glare off the surface of the water. Compositionally here though, it can be a little bit difficult because when you're doing fine details or intimate landscapes, what do you look for in a composition? Well, when I'm framing things like this up, basically what I'm looking for are shapes. I'm looking for lines, I'm looking for repetition and patterns. I'm also looking for pairing and triplets in these features that I'm photographing. So. The lily pads themselves, I'm looking for multiples that I can pair together. But to do that, when you get up to a scene like this, you can look at the whole scene and say, wow, there are a lot of lily pads here. Start wide, start with that observation and then work your way in. Start with a wide shot. So this is a 50 to 140 on a crop sensor body, which makes it a 70 to 200 when you do the math. So I'm gonna start at about 70. I'm gonna work my way down to the 200 millimeter point, and I'm gonna to try to pick out different parts of these lily pads that are behind me to try to pair together, create repetition, patterns, lines, all those things.
One of the things that I've found while being out here and, and trying to figure out and work this scene of small intimate details is that I'm looking for edges too. So you can see we have an edge that's occurring right here where we have clean water and then lily pads kind of around that space. So what happens when you use a circular polarizer and a pretty quick shutter speed just to handhold this scene, you're able to create like a dark negative space and play with the patterns with that. So what is just blank water kind of becomes like a black area of the photograph with a polarizer and with a faster shutter speed because we're using that area with the cloud cover, with the shadow, with the circular polarizer, with our 50 to 140, 70 to 200 telephoto lens to really frame it up and compose this shot well so that we can seclude these lily pads kind of in that area of darkness, in that area of clean water, and just see those on top, create kind of like this simplistic, good composition of fine details that are in the landscape. You know, as you continue to move around whatever you're photographing, for me it's these lily pads back here, it's important to keep an open mind and remain flexible about what you're photographing. You know, I think contrast and not just color and light contrast is really important in outdoor photography, nature photography, landscape photography, because you can pair things together. And instead of thinking about it just in light contrast, where you have highlights and shadows that are paired together, also think about compositions that pair new versus old, you know, intact versus torn, clean versus dirty. Those areas of the photograph of the composition become very interesting to people because there is that paradox there within your composition. So always keep an eye out for those. I found these lily pads behind me. And I photograph these of like new versus old type of contrast because you have a new lily pad that's perfectly on top of the water. Under the water a little bit under it, you have an old decaying lily pad. And it's just this interesting contrast that occurs in nature, that occurs naturally. You don't have to do anything to it. It's just a really good thing to keep an eye out for and pair together whenever you're shooting intimate scenes or smaller landscapes. You know, one thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately with photography, outdoor photography, is personal expression and mood within that photograph. And, and whatever you're composing or, or framing up, in a scene wherever you go out to shoot i think mood is so important like how were you feeling that day what was the weather condition when you were out shooting what did it make you feel and i think that is what makes people connect to the images that's what makes people focus in on hey something else is here rather than just a good composition and that connection is key so like today the mood could be gray skies, you know, it's turning fall, it's a little gloomy outside today. Maybe these could be great in black and white. We have those images that we've framed up on the very edge of the pond using that water as negative space. What would it look like to transform that lily pad into a black and white photograph, having the lily pad as the highlight the water as the shadow. So I think mood, for the most part, is underutilized. And I think more and more people, as they continue to get into photography a little bit more, are gonna realize that and kind of frame that up. Thinking about details, thinking about expression and artistic creativity in their images, and just creating more interesting photographs.
know, as I pack up, one of the last things that I do want to remind you of is why you got started in photography in the first place. Because I think that's also a lost art in photography is we get so wrapped up with photos that we think we want to get when we go out to a location, whether that's local or somewhere you've traveled to. And for the most part, what happens is we lose sight of some of the smaller scenes and smaller details in nature. I would encourage you to go out and find a spot like this close to your home where you can spend a lot of time, where you can go out and look for different details in nature. It's this idea of slow photography and, and thinking really intimately and creatively about a scene. And it, it's something that I've been trying to do with my own photography just because of the rush that you can sometimes feel when you go out and you're shooting something like an epic sunrise or an epic sunset and you have that limited amount of time where the light's changing constantly and it's going really fast. But a place like this with conditions today, you could literally spend, you know, four hours here finding different patterns and finding different ways to frame up these lily pads or grasses or sand patterns, whatever's around you, you know, you can find a spot like this. And it's not like, you know, I drove 10 miles from my house probably to get here. So it's not like you have to go to a national park or a protected land to, to find one of these places. You can go to a less known area. You can go to a local area and find a place like this, practice your slow photography and not only judge your photos by success or failure rates, but judge them by how good of a time you had when you went out to shoot, how good of a time you had getting in touch with that creative side of photography, you know, finding mood in the photograph, framing up different patterns and compositions. And I think that's where we start to take great leaps in our photography and really start to see improvement in our photographic style, improvement in our enjoyment of photography, which essentially is why we got into photography in the first place.